Here's our next problem to work on. We're nearing the end of the Calculus 3 course, multivariable calculus, and we're going to take a look at this problem about the mass of a surface. So we have a density function, rho of x, y, z, so that means you know we're in three dimensions, is x plus 3y plus z, and we're going to find the mass of the first octant portion of the following surface, which is, as we hopefully know by now, a plane. So this particular plane um, has x-intercepts that is 4 times 3 is 12, so 3, and y-intercept that would be 4, and z-intercept is actually 12. So as typical, the graph is not to scale. And the portion in the first octant looks a lot like a, this triangle right here. We're not doing a volume. That's from previous. This is just the mass of that triangular wedge shape given the density function that's indicated up here. So before we go any further, the mass of a surface integral is a double integral, and the double integral is going to require us to know the boundaries in our xy plane. And we can see from the diagram here that the x-intercept is 3 and the y-intercept is 4. So that little triangular region is our region of integration for a double integral. And we also know that the formula for mass requires us to know the equation of the surface itself. And so the surface is g of xy, which is whatever z equals. And for this particular surface, z is going to be 12 minus 4x minus 3y. We'll also need a few other details, like the x partial derivative of the function g is going to be negative 4, and also that the y partial derivative of this surface is going to be negative 3. So those are some of the key pieces we'll need to continue on further in this problem. So make sure you have that written down, because I'm going to scroll off the screen very soon here. All right. So mass is given to be um, double integral of the density function um, with respect to the surface. And we've seen with a small little bit of derivation that this is kind of, in effect, our actual formula for mass of the surface in this Cartesian equation. So one of the things we mentioned before in class, but need to draw your attention to it here, is this is a double integral. And that right there is z. And that's one many, variable too many for this problem. So we're going to have to, to come to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to let um, z is the surface, which in this case is g of x, y. So that will be part of our multi-substitution that we have to take care of here. So here we go. Mass is given to be integral x plus 3y plus z, and z is 12 minus 4x minus 3y, square root of 1, and g with respect to x was negative 4. We square that, we're going to get 16. And g with respect to y is negative 3. We're going to square that, we're going to get 9. And then dy dx. Missing our boundaries. Our boundaries, we're in that double integral of the plane here. x goes from 0 to 3. And y goes from 0 to, wait a second, what does y go? 
Let me go back here again and realize maybe there's one piece of information missing. What is the equation of that line right there? Well, that graph is y equals slope negative 4 thirds times x plus y intercept of 4. That's our upper boundary for the double integral. y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 4. Negative 4 thirds x plus 4. For if we were not going to integrate it, we might leave it like this, although we should probably simplify what's in the square root over here. But let's go ahead and integrate this problem. All right. Um, let me just point out to you lots of moving pieces here. This simplifies to something not so scary. And the square root becomes the square root of 26. That's not so bad. So I think we can take a big chunk of the width of this problem before we actually integrate 0 to 3. 0 to negative 4 thirds x plus 4 x minus 4x is negative 3x. We have 12 minus 3x. And 3y minus 3y is 0. I wonder who set that up nice like that. Square root of 26 dy dx. Let's integrate. So what do we get here? We get uh, 0 to 3. Uh, root 26, 12x, excuse me, y, because we're integrating with respect to y, minus 3xy, and y goes from 0 to negative 4 thirds x plus 4. Then later we'll get to integrate with respect to x. So this is going to take a little bit here. root 26, 0 to 3, 12 times y, y is negative 4 thirds x plus 4 minus 3x, negative 4 thirds x plus 4, and we substitute y equals 0, we get 0, so that's kind of a mess, but let's see if we can clean up that mess a little bit. Square root of 26, 0 to 3, 12 times negative 4 thirds x is going to be negative 16 x. 12 times 4 is 48. Negative 3 x times negative 4 thirds x is positive 4 x squared. Negative 3 x times 4 is negative 12 x. All right. I see a little bit of work we could do with like terms, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. 26 in the root, 0 to 3. We get here 4x squared minus 28x plus 48. Integrate with respect to x. Tedious. Maybe not difficult, but definitely tedious square root of 26. Integral of 4x squared is 4 thirds x cubed minus 14x squared plus 48x. And x goes from 0 to 3. All right. A little bit of arithmetic. When x is 0, those three terms are all 0. When x is 3, we get 36 minus 126 plus 144, which ultimately gives us 54 root 26. Maybe I could make my 5 a little bit better. 54. I don't know if that's better, but that's what you're going to get. So, end question. If we were to put units on this type of problem, what kind of units would they be? 
you might need to go back to the beginning to determine what might be reasonable units to expect. I'm going to leave that as a cliffhanger. Talk to you later.